Hi guys, welcome back to the second part of this core data series. This is uh, going to continue from the previous part, which was just hard coded our entry into the core data after making our two objects in the entity uh, model. Two quick things. Um, I'm going to keep going from this basic application and do all the methods myself. Um, if you use a master detail based uh, example with core data, you'll see a lot of code put in there and it's it takes a while to get your head around all of it because it implicitly creates the um, manage object controller uh, which can be kind of tricky, very helpful and that that template will be used later on if you want to add and delete things very easily from our from our table view using core data but for now we're going to keep it very simple, I'm going to do all this myself so I might take another one or two choice too but I'd advise you to keep it simple then slowly get into the proper way of coding it and the better way of reducing your overhead all that kind of stuff and the second thing is people have asked me to make a few tutorials on certain things I have no problem making tutorials to get people started on projects but people are basically asking me to make full applications and making tutorials like making full server requests making user interaction and all these things for tutorials that's just not going to happen first because it'll take far too long to do take several days to complete these things and then people basically ask me to make apps for them which isn't the whole point of stories these stories are basically a stepping stone for you to get your head around some some of the things and then start off and build up yourself i'll gladly help you along the way if you have problems but i'm not going to make full applications for people so you know you have to try these things yourself you have to learn by failing that's how it's done okay so we're going to expand this project into two view controllers our main one's going to be a table view controller it's going to be called table view controller and subclass of table view no nib this is going to be our display class this is going to be our main view controller so to show that off we're going to import table view controller into our delegate and then we're going to delete create data because that's no longer any use to us we don't want that anymore and create data itself can go away okay now table view controller call it table equals table view controller a lock in it okay we can instantiate our table view controller you wait navigation controller call it nav is equal to ui navigation controller a lock in it with root view controller table okay so we have navigation controller in our table view controller and then self self dot window window um, dot root view controller equals nav so this will automatically dial us into our um, navigation our table view controller okay but now we want to add something to this that will let us uh, create a new entry into a database. We don't want to hard code, we want to add this straight from a view controller. But we want to make a button to get there. Now I like using I like presenting model view controllers for this kind of thing because pushing view controllers makes me feel like I'm leaving the main part of the application. Whereas presenting just um it doesn't really mess around with the view stack. It basically puts an, another view on top of the view controller st the navigation stack and then we dismiss it it just takes it right off i think it looks much better it requires a bit more coding to do what i'm going to do in a, in a few seconds but i just prefer it i think it looks better and keeps everyone a lot more tuned into what you're doing so self dot navigation item dot right bar button item equals um this gets a bit tricky ui bar button item a lock when we're using the apple provided uh, buttons in it with bar button system item UI bar button system item add target is self and selector is add selector add okay so what this is doing this is adding the button to our um, table view controller I'll show you what it's going to look like now this is definitely going to take a second tutorial we haven't even started fetching or okay I've made a little mistake there I haven't properly set up my delegate for some reason table table equals nav There we go. I oh, just the uh, I had this in the wrong place, so the screen was 
putting a, a white screen over my, nav my, my table. So you can see the button here. When I press that, I'm going to use that to put the dot into a new view. Um, I'll die in to, to go present in model view controller over this view. So now let's create that view that's going to be the model view controller. And it's going to be the detail view controller. And it's going to be a plain old view controller with a nib because we're going to be adding some outlets. Create, create. Now I'm just going to show what's going to happen when we do this. Um, we need to import our detail view controller. Import detail view controller. Now, this has a selector for a method called add. Add doesn't exist yet. If I press that button there, it would have crashed because it doesn't know what add is. So I'm going to make add now. Detail view controller. Call it detail equals equals uh, detail view controller. A lock. Ech. Yet. Now, self dot navigation controller. Present model view controller. See it here present model view controller. Enter. Uh, detail animated, yes. Now, if I push view controller here, there'll be a different outcome. Now, okay, this is gonna take two tries anyway, so I'll show you the difference between presenting and pushing, okay? This is what push is gonna look like. Okay, my push view controller, which is animated, it just pushes the view up on top of this one, okay? Now you notice I can't do anything like back or anything here because presenting hasn't pushed a view controller, it's just put another view on top. So I have to manually account for that to put in a navigation bar and a, uh, a way back. But if I push view controller, detail, yes, it would add a different outcome. Now what this is do when I push the view controller, I'm simply rearranging the navigation stack. So I'm taking this view out, I'm slipping this view on top of it. And then when I go back, it's rearranged them again, okay? But I always find pushing view controllers, it feels like you're moving away from the application. I, I just think for adding something, this is our main view, we want to keep users on this view most of the time. So I would prefer to present the model view controller. It looks different when I have a bit more stuff added to it and it's a bit more code, but I just prefer it. It's it's personal choice, and I just think users respond better. But now, in our detail view controller, we need to have a few things. UI text fields, mostly. UI um, text field, name, text. Oops, IB outlet. IB outlet, UI text field, uh, number text. I'm going to set this up really quickly into our nib. And first thing we're going to do is just change the color of the background to gray. Just make it look a bit easier to see. Um, gray. Excellent. Right, two labels. Copy and paste. Copy and paste. Uh, name. And number. I can two quick text fields, boom, copy and paste. Okay, now the number one is going to be a, um, a digit. So change keyboard from default to number pad. And do not forget to connect your two connections, name text to name and number text to number. Okay, nib done. Nib is not coming back ever again, hopefully. Okay, we're going to do our, our data entry model first because we obviously can't do anything unless we create stuff. Now, as I said, because I'm doing a present model view controller, I have to programmatically put in the um, navigation bar and the buttons, okay? So this is what this code here is doing, and I'll explain to you after I paste it. Okay, nav bar, just creating it with code to be just the width of the frame and 44 pixel height in the top left corner. I make a navigation item and on that item, I'm pushing that item onto the, um, I'm making an item to be within this frame. And on this item, I'm putting a title and two buttons, cancel and add, okay? Then add them to the navigation item, and then adding the nav bar to the view. So I'm making the nav bar, making the item to go into the nav bar, 
this item contains one title and two buttons, then the navigation bar will add to the view, and the result will be. Don't worry about the two warnings, that's the tail view giving us a warning that we haven't done anything with it yet. That's perfectly okay. There we go. Okay, it's going to crash because I haven't made cancel yet. But very quickly, I'm going to basically replicate the um, the model I made for the detail view, sorry, for the app delegate, okay? But the delegate has the all the stuff for us to use in it, like um, the data model, the uh, the core data setup. So we have to dial into that. So we have to make a accessor to get into the app delegate. App delegate app. And synthesize app. And we're going to use thing called singleton. Singleton will allow us to access any property of the delegate. So app crap equals UI application shared application delegate. Okay, so whenever I call anything with a prefix app space or app dot whatever it'll allow us to access any property of the delegate. So this means now we can do all our core data entry in this class. Perfect. Let's make a bit of room. And void add. Okay. So now we can do the same thing we did in the delegate, but in a different class. How cool is that? So NS managed object context context equals and we add self uh, manage context in the delegate, it's just app manage object context. Awesome. Now, same thing we'll do here, same thing we did in the, um, the delegate. We're going to set it up very quickly. In fact, I might just pause the video to save time. Um, and Okay, guys, I quickly just modified the um, what we did in the delegate to be what we've done before. Sorry, to be a bit different than we've done before. So we've made our phone object, which is the same, which is the uh, entity for phone, which is what we've done before. Now, we don't want empty objects to put into our database. Okay, so quick checker. If the text field is empty, so less than one, and the number te or the number text is less than, less than zero, so if, no if they're both empty, nothing will happen. But if they're not empty, they will make what we've entered in the name text field to become the, f the the phone number name and then the phone number number to be the phone number. So it sounds confusing but that's what it is. Now because we have our number in the database saved as, as a number we have to convert you know, what this is. It's a string essentially. We've entered it in the text field as a string but we're casting it as an int and then casting the int into a number. Kind of a long way of doing it but um, it's just a easy way to do it. So if that if they're both going to go in, perfect. And we want to dismiss the model view controller. So this one button press. Once these text fields are filled and added to the database, we'll go back to the table view controller. And if um, you know it's not, we won't go anywhere. Nothing's added. Also, cancel is just the same thing. Dismiss model view controller is how you get rid of model view controller. You don't go back like the button in the push view controller. This will dismiss the entire layer. So I'll quickly show you what happens. So. Um, I'll leave the database, uh, the, the show in database to the next tutorial, which will be very quick. But if we push to view controller and we try and add, nothing's going to happen because I have that checker saying nope, 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 not going to happen. But if we do have something in here, oops, I was realized I put my name ta uh, label too high up, but cancel will just bring us back. See, I like that much better than the push view controller because it makes people feel like it's only a temporary view so they've never really left the application they haven't left our main focus so I just think it looks much better than pushing view controller a bit more code as you saw there that's just because I didn't want to give a navigation controller to this view if I had given the navigation controller to this view controller we wouldn't need the nav bar creation but I don't believe in handing navigation controllers to every single class because that means if you are pushing view controllers every single time you're going to keep um, pushing users away from the main functions. So it's just kind of the way I like to keep them centralized to the main functionality. So we're adding things to our database. This works, trust me, we did it in the last tutorial. Now, next tutorial we're gonna um, set up our table view controller. So everything we enter will be added directly. And once they've added it, they go back to the table view and see all our updates, which are all gonna be in the table view controller. Folks, I'm gonna leave it there for this one. I'm gonna do the second part third part now and join me soon for the conclusion.
Bye.